And so that is also something in place. But on a broader scale, we Hilda, need to are you sure it is change. in place? When you say in place, do you mean Accra or Ghana or North or South? Or which the court I went to the last time, is it in place? So, Angela, I challenge you to visit Circuit Court 5. That is just one region. Uh -huh, nice. But in, other, court in five. all other region, mm -hmm. in all other region now, at least there's one thing, one child-friendly court. That I can also challenge you to yeah. check. No, don't, you don't need to challenge <laughs> me. I, I want you to be specific. When yeah. you say it's in place, it, is because it gives the, the impression that it's across the country. It is across the country. Okay. How many courts? At least 10. 10 courts. 10 courts now. 39, 39 yes. million. 10 courts. Child friendly. Angela, at least let's congratulate ourselves because it's a journey we have embarked on. We How many years ago? All at once. The first child friendly court was launched 4th December. Right. 2018. Okay. So that is a big step to take, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to leverage on that. The question for me will be for us to assess the nature of cases that these courts are handling. And whether that is encouraging and compare it with the previous when these courts were not in existence and then make a case for replication and so it's a journey gradually we'll get there sustainability we need, we need who is going to take care of those courts to see whether they're doing it and they'll continue and we'll come back five years when you have moved on I, I would, I to would, the un age you and you are no longer there not, what will happen i would not i would not want you to be pessimistic because while we were supporting the establishment of the court, we also took into consideration the sustainability of the court. So it's 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 what is the question will be what is there that requires resources to maintain? Okay. The the logistics we've put in place, we built in already the persons who built it to ensure that there's continuous maintenance of the equipment. The people we are training to serve as support persons have the knowledge and the skills. Okay, my right. question would and be: the institutions themselves, the institution, has it picked it up in such a way that in five years we won't come to this summit and and you know speak as though we are starting again? And who is watching over the institutions so that they will do what they say they will do? You get my question. That that is a question, but also we we do. UNICEF didn't do the court. So, Talina, you and I know that we are UN agencies. And like you rightly said, we support the institutions. And what I rightly said was, we have supported the judicial service to put in place that system. The, the, the circuit court five had been a circuit court five all this while. Mm -hmm. Making it gender friendly and child friendly is the difference. Mm -hmm. Right? So, UNICEF didn't do that because the court, we didn't even build the court. We can't build the court because we don't do bricks and mortar. But what we are doing is that we need to strengthen the system that provides services for children. Yeah. And part of strengthening the system is ensuring that the institutions put in place a mechanism that recognizes that a child is in court and that that child is a vulnerable child and that child has been traumatized, that child has been abused. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we as an institution, our services should not further deepen the trauma of that child. Absolutely. And that is why that child-friendly system is only to aid the process and ensure that the child is not further traumatized. Right. When the Chief Justice inaugurated the court, she had even said that from now on as an institution, let's begin to budget to sustain the court. That she didn't even say that UNICEF to support. And I thought that was complete ownership of the process. Okay. You know, well, that's and nice to know. It is, it is indeed true that we are having challenges as a country. But once we begin these steps, let's be encouraged and let's support it. Civil society as, an, as a group also have a responsibility to hold government accountable mm -hmm. and also to contribute to making things a bit better. Mm -hmm. And so asking the question about who is supervising them, I will throw it back to the civil society organization. Are you also watching and holding our institutions accountable and therefore asking the necessary question? And I for the, the money you also mobilize, you ensure that it's contribute to deepening the rights of people in Ghana. Those are the questions I would ask. Because essentially when it comes to accountability and watching over the gatekeeping mechanism, that's why we have civil society organizations. And I would encourage yeah. them to do more on that. Right, Hilda. I, and I love that you